Well, hello everyone. This is Dale from the Precept Classes in Coleman, Alabama, and I'm glad that you have joined us here for our last lesson in 1 Samuel. Uh, as you see, I have a guest today. This is our latest little granddaughter, Eliza, Eliza Grace. And so uh, I'm sort of babysitting her this afternoon, and she's being good at this moment. And so she loves the outside, so we came outside here. It's sort of cold, but she likes that a lot. And so, our last lesson, 1 Samuel. We have learned a great, great deal of how God dealt with his people, how the Lord was calling his people, how the Lord raised up leadership. And in this uh, last lesson, you covered chapters 27 through 31, which is a lot of material to cover. And the bottom line, as I always say, uh, with this entire list is that David strengthened himself in the Lord while living among the enemies of the Lord. And we need to grab a hold of that idea, okay? Because we live in the world, but we are not of the world. The scripture tells us that. David knew that he would be king someday. He knew that day was coming very quickly. But he also knew that as trials and tribulations arose, that he could not trust in himself and in his own ways. We saw some of that last week in the way that he handled uh, the ball and the way that he handled Saul and some things that were happening. So we're going to see something else that occurs here in chapter 27. And David and his 600 men had gone up to Achish, uh, the king of Gath, and they sought protection there. And David realized he couldn't live in that uh, the king's city, so he asked the king for the city, and the king said, okay, I'll give you a ziklag over there. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking like he gave him New York City or something like that, but he gave him a settlement area and a place where they could live. And so they came there, and they were living in that area, and David went out and, and attacked. Now, the king, okay, the king thought that David was going out and attacking on his behalf and attacking Israel. But what David was really doing, he was going out and attacking and destroying the people that had been the enemies of Israel. And he was doing what God had called the people to do, what God had specifically told Saul to do, which was to utterly destroy, particularly the Amalek. I know, baby, can you believe that? So uh, he has several cross-references where the Amalek came from. In Genesis 36, you saw that Amalek was a grandson of Esau. And you saw in several of the scripture passages why God wanted them destroyed. It's because they did not fear God. Uh, Balaam actually uh, cursed them as the enemies of Israel. And also, when Israel was coming out of Egypt, uh, Amalek would uh, attack from the rear and pick off the stragglers. They were that type of enemy. And so the Lord told Saul that he was to utterly destroy them, and Saul didn't. David set about, well, bless you, baby. Uh, David set about to do exactly that. So in 1 Samuel 28, we see that Achish, the king, trusted David so much that he wanted him to go into battle with him and to be his bodyguard. I mean, literally to be his bodyguard, to be the keeper of his head is what it means. Uh, also in this chapter, chapter 28, we see something really, really interesting. Samuel was dead, Saul was panicking, and he needed to hear from somebody. He wanted to hear from God, but he called upon God, and God didn't answer Saul had removed all the mediums and the spiritists from the lands, as he should have been, because we see in Leviticus and Deuteronomy, you're not supposed to have those kind of things in the land. And so um, when Saul saw the Philistine camp, he was terrified. So he asked for his people to find a medium for him. And the people, I mean, his, his people were going, are you sure? Well, they went out and they fought, found a medium, a witch, found a medium at Endor. Saul disguised himself, and he went to that medium. And the medium said, hey, don't you know that Saul has said that we're not supposed to uh, do anything like that? And Saul said, well, don't worry, don't worry, it'll be okay. Well, when the medium called forth for Saul and called forth Samuel, who Saul had asked for, she cried out. And all of a sudden she realized it was Saul, and she realized she'd been deceived. Now, there's a lot of interesting points to this, which we don't have a lot of time to get into. But I'm sort of thinking that this woman was really, really amazed because Samuel actually came forth. See, the same thing happens today. These kind of things are real. Mediums, spiritists, and that type of stuff. Absolutely, totally real. When she was calling for somebody, she was expecting to see her local demonic thing that she always dealt with, shall we say. The one that she saw. But what she saw instead was the real Samuel that came up. She realized at that point, wait a minute, something's going on. When she realized it was Saul, she thought she was a dead woman. And he said, no, no, you're not going to suffer any punishment for this. And so he winds up having this discussion and this dialogue with Samuel. You know, Samuel's sitting there going, why have you disturbed me? Why have you called me up? Um, you did some cross-referencing about all that where Samuel might have been uh, in the bosom of Abraham and that kind of stuff and what happens to people when they died in the Old Testament and the New Testament. 
So we're just going to stick with what's going on in Samuel because of our length of time. Uh, Samuel tells him, what? Well, you weren't obedient to the Lord, and that's why this is going to happen. And as a matter of fact, this time tomorrow, you and your sons are going to be dead. And Well, you can imagine what that did to Saul. It just totally, absolutely bummed him out. He wouldn't have anything to eat. His people were worried about him. He was even more afraid and more terrified after he spoke with Samuel, as he should have been. Uh, the, the meeting there the indoor, and the people finally got Saul to eat some stuff, and they left. Chapter 29, we see that the Philistines are gathering the aphid. And they were uh, <clears throat> gathering together to attack Israel. David apparently was going to go to battle with him because the king wanted him to go. But s some of the other lords of the Philistines went to the, the main lord and said, Hey, are you crazy? Don't you remember who David is? He's the one they sang the song about. They said, There's no way. And so the king, uh, really brokenheartedly, sent David away and told him that you, you can't go and fight with us. So you see David departing from there, and he did not go to fight up against Saul. So in chapter 30 of 1 Samuel, while David and his men had been going away fighting the Philistines toward the battle, Ziklag had been raided by some of the Amalekites. And the Amalekites had hauled all their wives, their women, um, and their children, and their stuff. And the, David was greatly distressed, and the people were greatly distressed. And there's a great lesson right here. Great lesson. If you don't get anything else today, get this. Because what occurred right here is that the people, the 600 men of David, the ones that had been within the caves and the woods, uh, on the plains, running through the desert, these men started to turn on him, and they spoke of stoning him because of what had happened. They had just lost their uh, wives, they lost their families, they lost their stuff. And David saw this. He inquired of the Lord, but before he inquired of the Lord, a great line, it says, And David strengthened himself in the Lord. Yes, baby. David realized that his strength was in the Lord and in him alone. There was absolutely nothing that he could do without God. So he strengthened himself in the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. When he did, God told him what to do. Take 600 men, go charging after the raiders. They did. They recovered everything. They did not lose a life. They didn't lose a family member. They didn't lose any stuff. David sent some of these spoils to some of the elders of Judah and some of the friends. In other words, he was sharing of the victory. Then in chapter 31, the last chapter, and our final moment or two. Israel ran from the Philistines in battle. And we see that what was prophesied by Samuel from the grave, because God allowed that, uh, came true. Saul was wounded in battle and died by his own hand. Now, some people want to say that he committed suicide. No, he probably knew, and he did. He knew that the, uh, uh, the wound was uh, unto death, and he did not want to be uh, a point of jest to the Philistines, which he wound up being anyway. Saul dies his son Jonathan died and his other sons you find out die in this day the men of Israel flee all around the Philistines take Saul's head and they send it to the land and their bodies are put up on the city wall and you find out to the men of Jabez Gilead uh, come and take down the bodies and burn the bodies and give them a proper burial at Jabez Saul died a sad death okay? he was mourned for seven days but when Saul died that opened the door for what we're going to see in 2 Samuel for David to come in and to be who God had called him to be, who he's already anointed to be, and who David, who re David, remember, he refused to go and seize the kingdom, right? To seize the kingdom, and now the kingdom was about to be his. Again, I'm Dale from the precept classes in Cullman, Alabama. I'm still down in Beaufort. I'm up next to a slough right here with little Eliza Grace. And so we just speak God's blessing over you and just encourage you to join us uh, in Second Samuel. Oh, yeah, she likes to suck on my hand. Mm, yes, in 2 Samuel, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.